I had no clue that Elon fucking Musk, the richest dude on the planet, was a shit poster. Not only does he have over 80 million followers. Hey everybody, what is up? It is Stan the Man. Welcome back to another Stan the Man podcast. How are you guys doing today? Hope you guys are doing really well. Uh, It's been a while, hasn't it? Okay, now before, if you're wondering what the hell is going on right now, okay, Stan, what happened to your hair? What happened to your fucking face? Okay, no, I did not just get out of prison. Okay, what ended up happening was okay, I, I wanted to get my, I wanted to cut my own hair. It's not the first time I cut my hair. I've cut my hair multiple times and I was just standing in front of the fucking mirror, right? I was just about to give myself a fade. I'm just looking at myself in the mirror and like, do I really want to just sit in front of this mirror for the next 45 minutes to an hour and a half giving myself a fade? Nope. So I just gave myself the factory reset instead. Okay. I just gave, I just reset my skull to its set parameters. Okay. Uh, but I, and I got the beard to compensate for that, even though I, it just looks like I'm, it just looks like I just escaped out of Guantanamo Bay or some shit, but oh, well, that's not the point of this podcast. All right. I'm back and I'm bald now. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to say. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. What the hell happened while I was gone? Well, Ukraine is still holding its own against Russia as, you know, as Russia has now changed its tactics completely by attacking over a long 300 mile long front line in eastern Ukraine, I think in the Donbass region right now. But just like Leonidas in the 300, the Ukrainian Ukrainian people are still able to slow down Russia's advance. And I think that's what they're aiming for to at least, you know, slow it down long enough that that eventually funds get depleted and the logistics of the army just gets just falls apart but that's a topic for another day what else is go- what else happened since i was gone um yeah chris rock slapped the no 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 not chris rock will smith slapped the shit out of chris rock because of some gi jane joke you know making fun of jada's uh, shiny new head <laughs> Like the funny thing about the joke was, and the funny thing about this whole ordeal is that Smith laughed when, when the joke was actually told, uh, this made the Oscars watchable for about 30 goddamn seconds. Okay. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out. Like what kind of person actually decides to sit down and take time from their day or their evening to watch the Oscars? Can you imagine that person? Can you imagine? Hey man. Hey man. I'm going out for a drink, okay? Um, want to join me? Say, like, nah, nah, I got the Oscars today. So you're really going to sit down and watch the Oscars? Yeah. <laughs> like that person has no aspirations in life whatsoever. And dude, I'm just, I'm just thinking about, you know, how the bloggers reacted to this thing. I'm pretty sure when, I'm pretty sure when Smith's hand made contact with Chris Rock's face, sewer grates from around the world begin sliding open as bloggers started crawling out of the muck to make horrible clickbait fucking articles, one horrible clickbait articles after another. Jada finally breaks her silence after Will Smith's slap. Chris Rock speaks on the assault. I don't know, like like them talking about how the dude got bitch slapped in front of millions of people is like the bravest freaking thing since a firefighter, I don't know, leaping through, fr- leaping through the flames, carrying the family cat. I don't know, fuck that celebrity, that celebrity trivia bullshit, but we, it's our fault. <laughs> it's our fault. We, we eat that shit up every single goddamn day. And I got my take on it. I got my take on it. Look, the funny thing was Smith saw, Smith heard that fucking joke. He heard that joke and you could see clear as day that he laughed and he saw Jada giving him the stink eyes like, oh, so that's how it is. You want me to get an entanglement when T-Pain next? And that's when Smith's Smith demeanor fucking changed. He walked up on stage like a WWE superstars intro. Okay. All he was missing was some fucking music. I think the perfect freaking soundtrack for Will Smith in that fucking moment would be uh, struck by lightning by Toto. I've been struck by lightning. Bam, 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 bam. I fucking love that riff so goddamn much. It's simple, but anywho, I'm paraphrasing. Anywho, 
after the fucking slap, okay, at first, you could see that Chris thought, he didn't expect it, but he thought it was some kind of joke. And then came the absolute spiral. Then came the spiral. You see, you hear Smith just scream out in the middle of the fucking Oscars, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Yes, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I kind of lost some respect for Smith for a little bit. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Dude, your wife could barely keep someone else's dick out of her mouth. Calm down. Like, why would you lose your composure like that over a woman who has betrayed you in the worst possible way? But I don't, I don't know what the relationship is like, so I'm going to keep my hot take till about there. What else happened? Oh, what, oh no, this is still going on. Fucking... Uh, people, okay, people have been focusing a lot on this, a lot of these days is a uh, freaking Johnny Depp versus uh, Amber Heard case. And I think the main reason why people are focusing on this so damn much is that it highlights that, I don't know, not only women are, vi- it's not just the women who are victims of domestic abuse. There are hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of men who are also victims of domestic abuse, but it just flies underneath the radar uh, because we, the people don't take that seriously. And I do find this entire trial a bit unfair because the only, the fuck was that? I think the only reason why this trial is being, is being t- why Johnny Depp's position is being taken so seriously is because he's Johnny Depp. Everybody cares about Jack fucking Sparrow, Willy Wonka. Nobody cares about the dude who's loading up lumber at Home Depot. If it was him, dude, he'd be laughed out of court. No fucking joke. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm paying attention to this trial, but with, with a lot, with not a pinch, but a whole fucking cup of salt. But yeah. But one thing that seems to be puckering the collective internet's asshole these days is the fact that Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion. Now, take whatever the hell I'm going to say next here with a grain of salt, people. I don't use Twitter. I do have an account, but this account was made when I was 13 and I've never used it. It was made with, a, with an email that, is po- that I haven't used in a literal decade. That email is probably filled with different versions of digital aids. <laughs> Christ alive. Like, oh man, I'm pretty sure if somebody opens that email, if somebody opens that fucking email account, freaking nuclear warheads will start flying up to the sky. That thing has like so many bugs on it that it's in quarantine. I don't even remember the goddamn email, but anywho, I don't use Twitter and I don't really know the ins and outs. God fucking damn it. It's so fucking hot. (laughs) I don't know the ins and outs of the site in general, but I still went down the rabbit hole because, you know, people seem to be just losing their shit over this thing, over this fucking thing, over the fact that when news broke out that Elon had basically bought Twitter, but let's, okay, before we move on to that, okay, I did my due diligence and I took notes over this entire fucking thing. I do that sometimes. If I see a topic I'm interested in, like that, that is no joke. If I'm watching a documentary, I will literally, and I like that documentary so much, I will sit down in front of the documentary and start taking notes like I'm in, like I'm in fucking history class or some shit. Okay. And okay. Let's just look at these real quick. All right, cool. I, you'd probably ask, why didn't I just write this shit down in Notion? Even though I love Notion, I love the app. I've been using it a lot. Um, there's nothing that, no, there is nothing that beats handwritten notes. But anywho, let's get down to brass tacks, okay? The life of Elon Musk, okay? Life on Mars, living on Mars might seem like a pipe dream and seems just as likely as, you know, a green midget, a wise green midget telling me how to move shit with my mind, which is like the the whole premise of the Star Wars franchise. Okay. Okay. It's fantasy, but not to Elon and not, and as far as we're concerned right now, not to the rest of the world. Okay. His dream is to have at least 1 million people living on Mars by 2050, okay, a quarter of a lifetime. A lot can happen in 25 years, and who fucking knows? Maybe there might be people living on Mars in 20 feet, in 20 freaking, in 2050. Okay, he is the richest man on, okay, depending on who you ask, 
Elon is either the richest man on the planet, the, a genius, the next G, the South African white genius, or, you know, an evil virus of Satan. It really depends on who you ask. He is the richest man on the planet with $277 billion worth in assets. Just, just try to, okay, ladies and gentlemen, try to wrap your minds around that for a little bit. $277 billion, okay? Now let's Rewind the clock a little bit. He was born in June in 1971 in Pretoria, a province in South Africa. And he had a little, let's say, to say he had a less than stellar childhood is a bit of an understatement. Okay, the dude got hospitalized because he, he was thrown down some stairs. He was literally bullied within an inch of his life, kind of like Eminem. But I'm pretty, and this this kind of scares me a little bit because what if this whole endeavor sending people to Mars, sending people to Mars, becoming the richest man on the planet? What if this? What if he's like becoming the next Lex Luthor? Okay, the next tweet he'll post is just him shaving his head and saying, "Yep, I am now president of the goddamn world. Fuck all of you." This time there there ain't no Superman to rescue us. <laughs> What is, what if this, what if all of this is just a villain's origin story, like a villain's rise to power? Anywho, he had a less than stellar childhood, okay, born to a Canadian mom and an abusive fucking dad. And apparently his dad would, would fucking beat his mom. I'm not quite sure on that. Like, like this all, this all seems, okay, all of this seems like the perfect concoction to freaking brew up the most epic villain we will ever see in our freaking lifetime. Okay. You may know him as the owner of Twitter, but what else does he have up his sleeve? And I written down like a list of shit, okay? In 1995, him and he and his brother started Zip. That was the company's name, okay? Him and his brother started Zip2, which was later sold for $302 million, okay? He got $22 million off of that. He was 27 when that happened. Can you imagine 27 years old and having $22 million? $22 million. Chris, it, it wasn't up until I was like 22 or 23 where I was finally able to afford a semi decent apartment, let alone, let alone be the own, let alone be the holder of $22 million worth of assets. Christ alive, how many lifetimes do you need? to actually achieve that. But oh, dude, if I had 20, if I had $22 million in my age right now, or 27 years old, well, I'm 24 right now. But if I had $22 million, ooh, I would buy me and my girlfriend a cabin in the woods far away from people in the misty mountains where it's not too cold, not too hot, just perfect temperate temperatures. All right, take ski trips, you know, that type of jazz. Read all day, sit by the fucking fireplace. Have a decent internet connection because Valorant still exists. I'm, I'm kind of addicted to Valorant now, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh man. But anyway, I'm sidetracking way too fucking much, okay? Anywho, he invested in XCOM, and I think that was like a $10 million investment, okay? And XCOM eventually, what was the name? Con- Confinity? Confinity? Confinity, okay. XCOM eventually fucking merged with another website uh, or with another web company called Confinity. I think that's what it called, okay? And that eventually turned into the company we know today as PayPal. That $10 million investment turned into $180 million. Yeah, $180 million. Okay, did he rest on his laurels afterwards? No, afterwards, okay. He basically used that 180, coal 180 mil as a start capital for a company we know today as SpaceX. And even afterwards, there was still, afterwards, there was still millions of left, millions of dollars left with whatever was left. He basically just used it uh, to, after he was, after he funded SpaceX and everything else, he basically used whatever the hell was left to buy Tesla. And then, I don't know, like a dude 
like a dude getting kill streak after kill streak to get a fucking tactical nuke, the dude started popping off. Millions turned into billions, and now he is currently the richest man on the planet, sitting at two hundred and seventy-seven billion dollars. And no one has ever seen a CEO or a or a billionaire like him. He has a childish persona on the internet. Fucking runs around with flamethrowers and shit. Smokes pot with Joe Rogan on his podcast. Like, the dude started fucking popping off. Okay, but it begs the question right now. Not, not the question, okay. $277 billion. That's a lot of money. The most money anyone will ever possess. With so much money comes great power. And in the wise words of good old, dead old Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. And uh, I don't think Elon has that. (laughs) I don't. The dude tweets multiple times a day to 80 million freaking followers. And he doesn't seem to realize that, okay, he has so much wealth and so much power that his farts can basically just change the curve, just change the flow of the market like that. Okay. We are one. I am genuinely afraid that we are one tweet away from a 2008 style economic, economic recession. Okay, yeah, let's see what else we got over here. He's got some pretty lofty go. He's got some pretty lofty and noble goals. He wants to stop climate change. Okay, he wants to ensure the survival of humanity by regulating the written by inserting regulations for artificial intelligence, which is a genuine threat, by the way. Okay, he wants to invest in solar energy. Now, all this sounds great, right? Well, it depends on who you ask. Okay, for example, factory workers. In, for, for factory workers at Tesla assembly lines, okay, compl- there are hundreds, thousands of complaints coming in from factory workers of long hours, horrible working conditions, people passing out from the fucking heat, and also unclear safety instructions because Mr. Musk does not like the color yellow. Think about that. He does not like the color yellow because that, there are some safety signs that are usually yellow, you know, like, hey, don't get into this machine, it'll crush you, are now blue. Now, it would make sense that if you're working on an assembly line with moving parts that weigh more than 15 fucking elephants that can turn your insides into outsides very fucking quickly, you would need very clear safety instructions. But apparently, Musk think, okay, now this, apparently Musk saw safety regulations, okay, all signs must be yellow, and just threw it out the goddamn window. I don't, I don't, I don't freaking know, dude. All right, and not, okay, not, and also, if you're an investor in some kind of way, shape, or form, if, especially if you, if you invest in cryptocurrencies and stuff like that, Elon, Elon might be the biggest fucking boogeyman, boogeyman's, boogeyman of all fucking time. I'm pretty sure every crypto investor's sleep paralysis demon is just Elon Musk smoking a joint like... <sighs> I think I'll, yes, I think I'll sell, it depends. I think I'll take Tesla private. (laughs) Like this dude, like there are people who have lost thousands of dollars because tweets had literally lowered the stock prices of Bitcoin. In fact, I think Tesla banned him from being the spokesperson for Tesla for three damn years because of a tweet that caught, that literally cost the company billions of fucking dollars. The dude has so much power. This is what I think, okay? The dude has so much power, but he's so fucking childish that he doesn't realize that his actions has consequences. His actions have huge consequences. He thinks that, oh, my steps will only make tiny fucking ripples into the water. Nah, those ripples turn into freaking 2012 level tsunamis real freaking quick. (laughs) And he fails, I think he kind of fails to realize that. Um, But I don't know, maybe he'll have a team of advisors afterwards, but okay, fuck it. He ended up buying Twitter. All right. And now I just mentioned, I don't use Twitter I don't use Twitter that often. I don't know the ins and outs of that website, okay? And but I still decided to go down a rabbit hole as rabbit hole when it came to Musk's whole Twitter venture, okay? 
At first, people thought he was bluffing. He became a shareholder of Twitter. He became a, sh his strategy is fucking phenomenal, by the way. At first, he became a shareholder for Twitter with 9% of the shares, I think. Okay, and he gave Twitter an offer. Either you let me buy the company or I will walk out with my 9%. And that will drop, if he would have walked out with his 9%, that would have dropped the company's stock prices by a lot. Who knows? It made, it made even freaking, it may, it would have even po it possibly it would have even freaking drive Twitter's stock value to the point where he would just Twitter would just go bankrupt. I'm not really sure how, if that's how the fucking market works. Okay, I'm pretty sure there are some freaking investors who are really freaking pissed off right now. Uh, and take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt, people. But it's really freaking weird. I had no clue that Elon fucking Musk, the richest dude on the planet, was a shit poster. Not only does he have over 80 million followers, but he tweets so goddamn much. And I mean, so goddamn much that I'm pretty sure Donald Trump, if he was still on Twitter, would be fucking jealous of the guy. Okay. Uh, my free, like, how does a dude find the time to run mul multiple multi-billion dollar companies and still find the time to post shit. I'm pretty sure when he goes on the toilet, I can, Im I can imagine Elon Musk just shitting on the toilet, you know, just fucking sitting on the throne, freaking dropping a fucking log into mm, dropping a freaking log into the toilet while just shit posting about something. Okay. Anywho, in a goofy plot twist, in a goofy plot twist resembling an M. Light Shyamalan movie, freaking Elon ended up buying Twitter and it sold at $54.30 per share. And he bought it for about $44 billion. I'm not quite sure in how he ended up allocating those funds, but he ended up getting it. Now, why is this happening? Okay, now do we get now we get to why. Elon, it's no surprise that Mr. Musk is a very big advocate for freedom of speech. According to him, I say, and I quote, free speech is the free, free I can't I can't fucking mimic the dude free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated mm, if that, that's a that's a hot take if i ever heard one okay okay i'm pretty sure he is kind of right freedom of speech okay he is kind of right freedom of speech is some Freedom of speech is something sacred and it allows for opinions to be heard and thus opening the floor for genuine and honest communication, which we as a society need. But to say that Twitter is the place where, where fucking discussions vital to humanity are debated, that's a bit of a fucking stretch. We are talking about the same site that, have, that has people promoting freaking Maps. Okay, let me give you an example. Maps. Maps are, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but it's pedophiles. That's basically what maps are. It's pedophiles. It's pedophiles trying to get into the LGBTQ community. That's exactly what maps are, what maps is. They, it is, it is basically people, both people who are minor, people who are minor and people who are of age promoting freaking, oh my freak. It is, it, it, it gets me mad just thinking about it there. It's basically promoting the age of consent and like, I don't know, the fact they, if I can fucking talk, if I can stop stuttering for two goddamn minutes, it's basically people who believe that there shouldn't be an age of consent. Let's just leave it at that. Pedophiles. We have zoophiles, people who believe that they are sexually attracted to animals and sexual intercourse with animals not only should be seen as healthy, but also should be promoted. Why? Anywho, so this is the town square. Elon believes that this is the town square. This fucking site full of wacky, goofy, and fucked up colorful characters is the town square where the future of humanity should be debated. I, 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 I don't know, dude. You got, you're, you're pretty goddamn optimistic. Let's just sit, let's just leave it at that. But oh well. As you can see, the dude's got some pretty lofty ideals, ideals that I'm pretty sure most people can get behind. Freedom of speech is something sacred and it allows for opinions to be heard. But in an age where we've gotten more polarized as people, okay, it might be a bit difficult. In this age, if you're, if, 
it would seem that if you're not 100% liberal, you basically risk getting a risk being a victim of a public lynching, your body paraded through the streets, then strung up from your entrails from a bridge with a sign that says bigot stapled to your fucking head. I, that's what I fucking see. So it would make sense that Twitter as a company would want to remain on the positive side regarding PR and thus he says there's censorship going on on Twitter. That is true. That is true. There is censorship going on on Twitter, but I wouldn't call it censorship. I would call it moderation because, okay, another example that I can give about this, okay, YouTube. There is literally every fucking day, there is literally years worth of content being uploaded to YouTube. Do you have any idea how fucking difficult it is to moderate that content? How fucking difficult it is to actually sift through all of that shit to figure out, okay, which one's a wholesome video of a child playing in the street and which one is a video of a child being executed in the street, okay? Now, you need that moderation on the internet to make sure people don't fucking spread misinformation. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't fucking know. This goes, this draws back, uh, there's a quote by German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche, I can't, I can't fucking pronounce it. Freedom for all may mean tyranny for thee, my good neighbor. This brings a few questions. How far can freedom of speech go? What do I mean by this? Freedom of speech is basically you saying what you believe and trying to promote what you believe. But it also means hearing something that you don't believe in and then not agree with and may possibly even piss you off and also people trying to force that belief down your throat. It's gonna happen whether you like it or not. It's only a matter of time before someone, it's only a matter of time before someone takes this and decides to, I don't know, abuse it. But I don't know if, if that's a good thing and that's a bad thing. I'm not educated enough on the subject to actually give a concrete opinion on that. But it does beg the question, how far does freedom of speech go? Where does the line get drawn? Before And where does the line get drawn? Everybody gets free speech from, I don't know, a child who believes in Santa Claus to a dude who believes that you should behead white people. I don't know. I don't know. What ha how, how long before people who have very extremist ideas use that freedom of speech to actually spread their ideas around? I don't know. I don't know. Can someone use it to spread? Another question. Can someone use it to spread misinformation? How long before somebody can actually use this freedom of speech to actually post shit that isn't real and just use, no, I'm just using my freedom of speech. Believe it if you want. It's what I think and it's what I know. Okay, don't believe the research. Don't believe education, that type of jazz. Okay, how long before someone can actually abuse that to spread misinformation about, I don't know, 5G towers, the pandemic, fucking governmental parties, all that jazz. Okay. <sighs> and will everyone actually stand to hear it? How, okay, what I mean by this fucking question, will, what do I mean by will everyone stand to actually hear it? We live in a very polarized climate these days. If you're not 100% left, you're 100% right. If you're not this, you're my enemy, that type of jazz, okay? I don't think that's a good mentality to have. Freedom of speech is something very fucking important, but we'll get to that in a bit. But how long before, you know, several groups of parties, people who actually have influence on the world, how long before enough people say something that they don't agree with to the point where they say, you know what, enough's enough. We don't want to hear that anymore. And they start clamping down on it. How long before that happens? How long before the free how long before the freedom of speech may very well end up being the cause of the downfall of freedom of speech? <laughs> I don't know. As I mentioned before, I don't think I'm educated enough on the topic to give a concrete opinion. But I will give my take. To be honest, as I just mentioned, I don't use Twitter and I don't tend to follow things that happen on the internet. So I don't feel educated enough to have a well-rounded opinion on this, but I will say this. Freedom of speech is something important in life. It is. It forms a foundation of good and honest communication, even between parties that don't see eye to eye. It will come with risks. You will hear something that you don't agree with. Hell, you may even hear something that will straight up piss, that'll straight up, up piss you off. But at the end of the day, that is what freedom of speech is.
You saying something that someone might not agree with and then saying something that you might not agree with. But it's up to us to be civilized enough to actually set aside our differences and actually have the floor open for communication and dialogue instead of just alienating one another for divergent opinions. For the simple reason that, I don't know, maybe he believes he's a girl because he has, I don't know, cock and ball, even though he has cock and balls between the legs. He still believes he's a girl. I don't agree with it, but I would still like to hear more. Tell me about it, okay? Instead of just, you know, screaming at each other. I don't fucking know. It's kind of weird. It's weird. It's a weird take. Anywho, guys, we've reached the end of this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed, okay? If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you enjoyed the podcast, oh my God, the microphone's too far away. If you enjoyed the podcast, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and also share around. There will be an audio version of this on Spotify. But in the meantime, this is Stan the Man, signing off. Hey.